YouTubers, Mike Martins here, Mike Martins channel. Thanks for joining me, guys. Um, this is a really good article because it actually pertains to every single English-speaking country. And the reason why I'm calling this little episode Net Worth Up, But At What Cost? Because it's the truth. At what cost? Why? Because a lot of people's net worth are on paper or uh, invested in assets that are very hard to cash like real estate so another housing crisis video coming your way guys net worth rising but higher debt stings canadian consumers says analysis that is showing that interest rates are rising faster than income provided a wake-up call to canadian consumers who are taking on unsustainable amounts of debt I don't know why, guys. In the last seven, eight, nine years, people have been piling and piling on debt so much, uh, way beyond their means. I, I don't know why. And, and not only that, it's that they're buying crap they don't need, too. Soaring home uh, valuations are inflating the average Canadian's net worth, especially in a real hot real estate markets of Toronto and Vancouver. But interest rate... Uh, cost increases are expected to force spending restraint going forward. And if you watch my predictions uh, video I did last night, I went live, I did my predictions for Q4 and Q1 of 2019. The overreaching story this year is that Canadians have never been richer, but there's a big but here. At the same time, they've never felt poorer, said Peter Miran. Senior Vice President of Research and Development and Architect of Wealth Spaces 2018 Analysis. Real estate's way up. Liquid assets are up decently. Their pensions are up. Everything on their balance sheet looks great. But all of a sudden, when you look at these rising interest rates, it's going to start pinching their cash flow and is going to leave them with less money left over at the end of the year. The situation isn't dire and, uh, at the moment, but it could easily worsen to the crisis level. When consumers are forced to sell a assets or even declare bankruptcy within the next four years if interest rates rise as expected, Marin said. Canadians overall paid about $9 billion more in interest charges in 2017 than they did in 2016. Guys, $9 billion in interest rate just to carry the debt that's not even servicing the debt that's carrying that's just the interest and that's not that does that's not covering the principal of what you're paying like your <laughs> your loan your loan your total loan so it's just just that's just an interest and and th that's just phenomenal uh according to uh, analytics uh, analytics so it's going to go up again uh in 20 uh we're going to get 2018 numbers soon hopefully uh, by Q1 2019, and we could get a good readout of what's going on and what's going to happen. That's about $544 more for the average Canadian household last year compared with 2016. The average Canadian net worth rose by 8.5% to almost 808000 in 2017. But, so the average Canadian is wor valued at net worth at 808000 808000 But, much of that wealth was tied up in assets that are difficult to cash in, such as real estate. Ooh, the big RE, the big RE, real estate. Meanwhile, average household debt climbed 4.5% in 2017, while the average interest expense to income ratio close rose 40 basis points, 6.4%, the first increase in a decade. The report says, remember guys, historically low interest rates, guess what happens with that? It's, it's a problem. Because you start inflating these hot bubbles, these uh, unspeakable bubbles, bigger than any tsunami on earth. Interest rates are far low now than the early 1980s when mortgage rates peaked at more than 20%. But the danger is just as real because houses are worth much more now, said Scott Hannon, president of the Credit Counseling Society. If you had a mortgage of 150 large, and the rates went up a quarter percent, you'd barely blink, he said in an interview. But when your mortgage is half a million dollars, and that's what I've been saying, 
when you have this much to borrow, your borrowing costs are huge to service these loans. Pay attention. You know, 1% on a million dollars, that's a lot of money. 10% on a million dollars, you know, like, okay, let's say 5%, that's fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year to service that million dollars as opposed to 1%. Uh, ten to fifteen thousand when re when there were record lows, even two percent. You know, you're looking at twenty, twenty two, twenty three thousand a year on a million dollars. Now you're looking at fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year to service that damn debt. And the average house is not even a million. In, in Vancouver, it's like one point four, one point six million dollars. Okay, that's like seventy to ninety thousand dollars a year in finance charges to service debts if interest rates are at a normal level. But when your mortgage is half a million dollars or higher, it has meaning, especially when the rates are projected to go higher over the long term. Of course, they're going to go higher. They have to go higher because wages aren't rising as fast as interest rate. Consumers are augmenting their income with more debt, he said, which leaves them vulnerable if interest rates rise to their income falls. The Enveritix Analytics report found that Vancouver's 17.2% rise in real estate prices in 2017 led to it posting the highest growth in household net worth in Canada, up 12.7%. But Vancouver also experienced debt growth of 8.5%, more than double the national average. Toronto's average household net worth grew 9.5% as real estate values rose 11.1% in 2017. The report notes that higher debt caused the average interest expense to rise by 932 bucks per household in 2017. So this is the same thing is happening. Uh, um, Australia right now is the highest highest to debt ratio in the world. A uh, home income uh, uh, income sorry, a debt ratio is one of the highest per capita uh, in the world, you know, somewhat followed by Canada. I think New Zealand's tied with Canada, and then it's the UK, right? So, what you have to do is start finding the most ex the, the, the the most expensive average homes that are a million bucks. Average. We're not talking about Beverly Hills. Average homes that are a million bucks. Those countries, those those cities that that have million dollar homes, and they're average. They're not something with a helicopter pad and 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 the tennis courts. Those are the ones you got to look out for that are going to oh, they're going to hit hard. Auckland right now, price is slightly declining. Everything's plateauing. Uh, they're reading the bill in now to not sell to foreigners. Look at that. They decided not to sell to foreigners anymore. They're passing a bill. Boom. Everything cools down. Or plateaus or just stagnates. Oh, God. We're going to see what's going to happen. And uh, condo prices right now. Condo prices and townhomes should be going up in price right now as we speak only because they're the cheapest inventory or the cheapest inventory left on the market that people could afford. And FOMO, even though rates are going up, people are still in FOMO mode, fear of missing out. So you're going to start to see condo prices start going up in Toronto, Vancouver, Sydney. Not much, not much, just a little trickle. And then people will breathe a sigh of relief thinking that, that, that condos are selling. It's only because it's the cheapest, cheapest inventory on the market. And that's been happening in Vancouver for the longest time. Once the detached market uh, hit a certain level, everybody jumped onto the cheapest, the cheaper market. Because people are starting to come into the market that want to buy. And every, every three to five years, you have a new sect of people that are coming in that want to buy. Like, well, I want to own my own place, man. What's the deal? What, what can I do? Well, buy a condo for now and then flip it and then buy a house. Well, that's what a lot of people had in mind. But a lot of people that jumped onto the cheaper inventory, six, seven hundred thousand dollars for one bedroom. They're in a lot of trouble right now, guys. Let me know what you guys think. A lot of people walking away from pre-built units. A lot of people, uh, um, you know, trying to get their refunds back from a lot of the uh, builders and stuff. So... Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. It's going to be an interesting uh, fourth quarter with spring in Australia and New Zealand. It's going to be interesting because spring sales, let's see how they go. Comment below, let me know.